Biotechnica and today I'm going to give you a talk on personal branding. Before I start, uh, I would really like to know, I was informed that all of you are third semester in the students, right? First. Okay, okay. it's a mixed population, great. Now, when you have entered into this uh, life science industry, we need to know what are the scopes, where we can apply, and how exactly we can get noticed. Okay. Now, suppose if uh, I tell you Xerox, what comes in your mind? Company. Don't you think of photocopy? Photocopy. It's a photocopy. Right? Xerox. Do make a photocopy machine. But most of the times we go to a photocopy machine uh, shop and we say, I want a Xerox. Correct? Or, uh, uh, you know, recently I went to uh, Hyderabad. Some people will say, How? Oh, in a Volvo. You know? Volvo is a company it's, which uh, manufactures buses. Right? So, what I mean to say <coughs> if I say nutritional supplement, what has come, come into mind? Nutritional supplement which is available in the market. Anything like Horlicks? Absolutely right. Compliant, Marvita. Okay. Now, leave that part. Now, coming back to the world where we are living. While all of, uh, all, both of my colleagues were giving a talk, how many of you just updated on Facebook? It's sitting in a boring talk by Biotechnica. Any of you? You can always do that because you're connected. Correct? The best part of today's era is we are democratized in terms of information. The only thing is, you people don't know how to access it. But this what I mean to say is, you should be knowing how to brand yourself and get noticed in front of the HRs, okay? in front of the companies. Now the biggest problem as soon as you pass out of your college is, you are tagged with something called as fresher, right? You are a fresher. <coughs> As if it's a sin. Oh my God! Come on, it's not. Okay. Now let's think of an example. When we were in, anybody used to get pocket money from that? Anybody? Did you get right? In your class one, how much you used to get? Anybody? Ten rupees. Ten rupees per day. Later on, as we grew, because of maybe mehengai. That increases to 100 rupees or maybe 1000 rupees a month, maybe, you know. Or let's uh, take one more example. When we entered our education system, we started with what? A, B, C, D, correct? Today we conjoin all of them and read sentences together, correct? Then why the hell when we get out of our college, we want to be called the next Nobel Prize winner? It's not, it's not so, it can't be. You have to give start from A, right? This is the mistake. All of us do when we come out of college as a freshman. So please stop expecting that when you are getting out of college, you're going to get you know X Y Z six figure salary in a very big brand, and that's when you pay and say, "Wow, beta, I'm proud of you." That doesn't happen. You have to start from it. Like when you started, you went into first semester, uh, first semester, then second semester, finally pass out, right, in the final semester. So everything has got a stage. In career, you are putting your foot set. Correct? Now, coming back to my topic of the day, which is personal branding and networking. Now, you were told, told about resume drafting or, and lot of career options, R&D, most of you are interested, or marketing, or scientific writing, whatever. But unless and until people know me how they would give me a job. Isn't that a question? That is a question. If I don't know you, and how do I know you? By your CV or resume. Now, three things I'll tell you. It's thumb rule. If you say your resume as resume, or you have not designed your resume, or you write your, or you say or write career as carrier, then my dear friend, you're not fit to get job. That's the first turn off. As soon as I said turn off, so the turn off. Great. You know, there's not just touch sensitive, voice sensitive also. <laughs> okay. Now, what I need to say right now to you is 
Once you are trying to get attention of the HRs, the first thing is you must be very good in communication. Okay? And one more thing, if you have not designed your resume, forget about it. You can't get a job. Even if you get, you lose it very fast. Okay? So there are several hurdles. First is getting a job, second is maintaining it, and third thing is carving out a career out of it. Okay? So for first thing is please make sure that you have designed your resume. If not, you have not designed your resume, also what you speak in the interview and what is written in the resume must be similar. The moment there is a difference, a HR who is taking 3000 interviews a month will be very effective in catching you that this person is bluffing. Okay? Especially the years part. If you have passed out in certain years, okay? As a fresher right now, it will not be a problem. Suppose you have changed four companies. In 2012, you worked in Biocon. 2013, you worked in Molecular Connections. And the month part and the year part, they'll always ask you. Okay? So be careful. If you mess around with that, you will suddenly, suddenly lose your chance of getting a job. Now, I'll just open my PPT. Give me two seconds. Now, my target of the day today is to help you understand how internet can help you get to know people and let it will help you create a personal brand. So, as you can see, there is a small logo at the bottom which is called as LinkedIn. And some of you must be having a profile. How many of you have a profile in LinkedIn? Okay, uh, you can say 30% of the population has got a profile on LinkedIn. How many of you have got a Facebook profile? All of you have okay. Great. All of you have what? Don't be shy, come on. All of you have okay. Now, look at this picture. Suppose some person comes to me, I am the HR, and I am taking interview. Right? I look at your CV, I see your email ID, I take it out, plug it in Facebook, and I know everything about you. Where you were last night, which pub, what you did, I know it. Okay? Now, Maybe you are not losing out impression in front of the child. Going to the is fine, no problem. But you lost that opportunity to show one side of yours when you are an intellectual, when you possess information, when you have got opinion about certain topics. Maybe from there he can pick some questions, ask you, and if you answer, you will feel that this guy has got stuff. Okay? Now, this is a very general practice nowadays. The moment you walk into an interview, they'll check your email ID, put it in LinkedIn and Facebook, <coughs> check where you have done what, and match it with your resume, and match it, match it with what you're saying. Okay? So, you have to be very, very careful in what you post on Facebook and what you make it public. Please share, you know, certain things only, only with friends, and certain intellectual things, make it public. It will help you. Trust me. And the same thing comes to LinkedIn also. So right now I'm going to introduce quickly to LinkedIn, because some of you already know it. And at the end, I'm going to tell you how to create an account with it. Now let's move in. Now, first thing is, suppose in this room, you've got friends, all of you. Go on LinkedIn, create an alumni association, invite all your friends and create a group over there. Okay? And make it active. Make it an Oxford College Alumni Association, something like that. Make it active and start networking there itself. Now suppose uh, this person is, net, uh, is connected to some HR and you want an introduction. Maybe not now, maybe six months later she can introduce you to that HR via LinkedIn and that will help you. Now moving ahead, connect with the real world contacts, the first point. So you have to connect with your own friends, all your friends. Okay. You all must be having your email IDs. Create a profile first. Invite all your friends over there. Okay? Moving to the next. Upload your contact database. Maximize your group affiliations. Now you must be amazed to know that there are several groups, biotechnology company groups, wherein the CEOs, HRs, and directors of several companies interact frequently on LinkedIn. Now, it is just like you are sitting in a, you are, you are in a party which is full of all these famous personalities and you are the one who is 
looking for a job, like you can see here in the image. There is a person in the middle in Surbhur and he is, say, a fresher and he's surrounded by people, all of them are CEOs. What can be better than this that you get in, uh, you know, endorsed by the MD of Acton Biotech? What better can be if you get a <coughs> recommendation from the CEO of Osimo Biosolution? But how is it possible if you don't get started? As we say, the secret of getting ahead is getting started. So go ahead, create network on LinkedIn. Now moving ahead, once you have started networking, if you look at uh, LinkedIn, if you use the search bar, you can always go for Able Group, which is Association of Biotech-led Enterprises. If you look at there, there are close to 108 companies which are active over there. They post their jobs even also there. Recently, I was just saying, there is a job in Able. So those things will certainly help you to get the knowledge about the opening faster. You can always check Biotechnica also for any such opening. Now, the moment you have the first hand information, there is an opening. Of course, now you know how, what all mistakes you can commit in a CV, create a better CV, and send it from a professional email line. Right? Now, create a one-on-one one -on -one, one -on -one networking. When you are in uh, LinkedIn, it gives you an option that you can actually send personal messages to different famous personalities. Okay? What can be better than this that you are a fresher and your updates are being read by somebody who happens to be at the higher most position? Okay? Or maybe a scientist or maybe HOD if you are targeting a college to for a lecture. So my point here is start sending one on one invitations, start getting connected with them and after that start posting valuable opinion and uh, intellectual opinion based status updates. Okay? Now in the later part of this second presentation I'm going to talk about how to get intellectual opinion. Okay? That's a separate thing. For the time being I would, I would like to tell you is you have to first create a platform. How many of you have a blog? How many of you maintain a blog? Anybody? Come on. This is the best time to popularize it. Anybody? Nobody. See, that's something which you must be doing. Now, if I say that you go to blogspot.com and create a blog, <coughs> now there are 200 billion blogs. Why somebody will read your blog? Highly unlikely. And that's the reason you have not created, actually. But here is where Technica comes in the picture. Now, the target is not just to create a blog, to get appreciation on social media, on Facebook and LinkedIn. Okay? So first you have to do some background check on certain topics, which are the burning topics. Write some blogs. Okay? And those blogs, if you are creating on any other platform, you will not get traction, you will not get popularity faster as a blog writer. But if you are doing it on Biotechnica website, you create a blog over there, and then you share that those links with your friends on Facebook as well as on LinkedIn. And the most important part is LinkedIn. Now the moment you create a blog, because Biotechnica is a close community <coughs> only of biosciences, bioscientists, so you start getting appreciation. And those appreciation would be via your network, because you already have your friends on LinkedIn. They'd be appreciated. <coughs> and you have also added some couple of HRs and uh, scientists of different biosciences companies. Okay? And then those companies, those scientists, if they are appreciating, that makes sense. Because next time you're going and sitting in an interview and somebody checks your profile, those things will come. Correct? And when that is coming, that somebody who is, you know, HOD of a particular college whom you are not associated with or a principal scientist of an institute or a company has appreciated your information, that makes sense. Correct? What if the HR asks you some question based on that and you are able to answer? Your job is easy. So as a fresher also you are showing your experience part. You are showing your intellectual opinion part. You are someone who can innovate. That is the first impression which you need to the HR. Okay? So that's where Biotechnica and LinkedIn will help you. Now the third part which I will talk about later. Now moving ahead, you can always, as I said, reply privately in discussions. You can find the best of the groups on LinkedIn. You can explore LinkedIn slash alumni and check, of course, if somebody has created your alumni association or a page for uh, Oxford College, you can go and join in there. So that, like you said, some of you are in touch with your seniors, some of you are not. 
what if one among your senior is placed in any of the companies, right? And he, he has a sparse of information to put any one of you. What if all of you are able to network and probably one of you gets selected in his company by a reference? Because the biggest question which is asked is do you have reference? The moment you walk into a biotechnology company today, the gatekeeper, you know, the watchman, he'll ask you, do you have pressure? Do you have preference? No, please get out. <laughs> okay? So, we are not here to listen to uh, such kind of words after five years of education in biotechnology from a watchman. Are we? No, right? Yes or no? no. So, obviously, we have to get references. LinkedIn helps us in getting that. Plus, your seniors will help you in getting that. Okay? What if some of your seniors are connected and you just connect to them? Now, why can't it be done on Facebook? See, Facebook is something casual. Let it be there. Okay? Let's not try to use Facebook for professional networking. It will never help you. Let's try to use LinkedIn and Biotechnica for that. That will certainly help you. Okay? Now, moving ahead, you have to add new connections. Okay? So, new, by new connection, as I said, you can send friend request to your uh, like you can go in search bar, just type CFO or CEO or uh, a particular company, right? And you can just check out the list, send request. And like you have got the list now, now you're sending. You've got the list, see here, and any one of them, you can send a mail or you can just click on add as a friend. Now if you look at, there are certain options. It's not as easy as Facebook that you just send a friend request and it just helps you. It will help you get connected. No, it will not help there. So what you have to do is, you have you should not be sending <coughs> something like you are a colleague of that person or a classmate of a CEO, which you are not. Rather, you just add him as a friend, which is the fourth option here. Just add him as a friend and they'll allow you to send across the request. Any other thing which you choose will actually screw your profile on LinkedIn. Don't do that. Okay? Once you have done that, and if and then it will give you an option to include a personal loan. In that case, you can just mention Dear Mr. This, 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 I was just going across your profile on LinkedIn. At the outset, I would like to introduce myself. I am Mr. XYZ and I am uh, a fresher from this. But don't mention I'm looking for a job. No. Mention that I'm really impressed by your profile and the work which your company has been doing. I am certainly looking forward to a lot of work in this field. And I feel too, uh, that connecting you on LinkedIn will be very much valuable to me. So kindly accept my request. It's a humble, gentle request. That's all. The moment you write, I want a job, forget about it. Okay? Just say, say that I want to network with you. That's more than enough. Now, that's how. Now, one more feature which is there. You can ask your friend, somebody among you who, uh, who is, suppose I am connected to the HR of everyone on LinkedIn. You can have, request me and I'll introduce. And what if he uh, uh, accepts you? Each time he is requesting, he's going to see your profile. And he <coughs> may call you next for the interview. Now, that's how uh, things work on LinkedIn. Again, I, as I said, keep in touch with the people. So quickly, let's uh, go ahead. Keep uh, doing small, small goods, uh, good things. Like, for example, uh, somebody has posted something like, I am considering buying this reagent. Will that be helpful? Just quickly do a Google search. I, and then just reply, hey, listen, I, was, I just did a search and found out that, you know, uh, you can go to this website and buy it out. Now, you may be a fresher, but how did you get to know? People will really appreciate. Okay? That's how you build your reputation. And that's when I said rocks or horlicks or reliance or whatever. You have to create your own personal brand. So that the moment you walk in, in the HR chamber and he searches you on Facebook or LinkedIn or Biotechnica as you will ways, he knows that you have got a reputation. Okay? And that reputation has been endorsed by several people who are already at the bigger positions in life science industry. Won't that help? Will that help? Yes. It will certainly help. It has helped so many people and it will help you also. But you have to do it religiously. Just don't do it for one day and forget about it. Hey, I did, I didn't got a job. No, it doesn't work that way. It takes time. Okay? So you have to be really active on the internet, but not just on Facebook, on LinkedIn and Biotechnica as well. Now, again, uh, for learn more, you can uh, learn more about LinkedIn on these links. Quickly, you can jot it down. Now, with this, I conclude the LinkedIn part. Now, coming back to one more quickly.
Now, what I'm going to introduce yourself, you, uh, to, you, uh, to you right now is something which will help you create a personal opinion about burning topics of life science industry. Okay? Now, what happens is, I'm trying to give you a clear picture wherein you have to create a chain of creating a personal brand. First thing what you do is, create a personal opinion about any topic. For that you need some source, information source. Now you can always talk to your faculties who would be very happy to share their piece of information. But what if, if you get a chance to interact with several faculties of several universities all across the globe? And that's where the internet helps you. Now once you have created an opinion about it, go ahead, blog about it. Think about it. I think this is what I uh, believe. Like for example, let's, uh, let me ask you a question. Why can't we synthesize human blood in lab? <coughs> That's a genuine question. It can be asked in interview. Correct? What if you blog about it and share it on LinkedIn and somebody who is from the life science industry, maybe a scientist, reads it and appreciates it? Make sense? Right? Or what if I say that, you know, uh, why can't we synthesize ATP in a laboratory and inject it rather than going to a canteen, eating food and, you know, wasting so much of resources? Let's, as biotechnologists, create a uh, machine which generates ATP and let's inject it, right? Why can't we do that? Now, if such opinions you have or you want to research over it and somebody, apart from your faculty, your faculty all, always will be helping you plus all other people, the more opinion you generate about it, go ahead, blog about it, and then post on other social media as well as professional media networks. So that's when you go to an interview, people will read and they will say, oh, this lady is knowledgeable, let me talk to her about this blog. And they, then she will, uh, the HR will say, hey, I am reading your blog right now and this particular topic, can you please elaborate? And that's when he or she will pay attention. You know, the pro biggest problem of this uh, current situation is we have got, as uh, Deepak was saying, we've got ten thousands of job seekers, people who are applying, and we've got, say, hundred vacancies. Then how do you get noticed? Because of your intellectual level. Now, that's when meet Cora, the future of creating opinion. Now, how many of you know this term, Cora? Anybody? Somebody will Google it, I know. On their smartphones, which are touch and voice sensitive. So, moving ahead, Cora is a website. Now, what makes it unique is initially when they started in 2010, they only invited CEOs, CFOs, as well as uh, scientists and people who can who have a lot of knowledge about any particular topic, including life science, only to the website. Okay. Now, how does it help us today? Is Today it is open to everyone. Okay. Now the benefit of this Quora is it is a huge pile of information, and you can ask questions. Now, if I tell you that, come on, we have Wikipedia, right? Why the hell I need Quora? We've got Ask.com, or we've got Answers.com, we've got Yahoo Answers or Google Answers. So many places apart from you know other things. And of course, the big brother Google, you can always ask him and he will tell me, right? But the point here, my dear friends, is authenticity and genuinity of information. Suppose there is a recent research work going on and some Tom, Dick and Harry goes and blogs about it or says something on uh, and Google indexes it or somebody goes and updates in Wikipedia and you read it and think it is a authenticated information and you use, use that somewhere and that just hampers your credibility. Is it correct? It's not. So let's have a source which will be authenticable by people who are veterans of the industry. And that's when it becomes www.cora.com. Now, maybe you're listening to music, you got an idea, or you're lazing off in front of, in front of computer, and you just went ahead, posted your question on Quora, and somebody is sitting somewhere in some sophisticated lab of yours, maybe a scientist, responds to you. And that's the best part. He responds to you, and you get a genuine answer. Now, what does that mean? 
That means that you are able to get authentic information about a recent burning topic in the life science industry and now you can go blog about it on several platforms. Of course, you can tweet about it, you can always post on your Facebook account, you can go and blog about it, but will that get you noticed? The question is no, because there are so many people who are already doing it. And that's when Biotechnica comes from the picture. You go and blog about it on Biotechnica and then share that link on Facebook and LinkedIn. People who are already on Biotechnica will 100% appreciate it or comment over it. And the moment more people comment, it will come more on your profile. That's how this network works. Okay? The more people comment on your blog, it will come more in Facebook, it will come more in LinkedIn. And that's when if it is coming more in the status updates of other people who are already in your network, say a scientist, he will read your blog, it is highly likely. Your target is what? Those people read it and comment it or they actually endorse it or share it. So what I am telling you right now is, you generate the information or collect the information about recent life science topics and get validated genuine information and then you blog about it and share on social media as well as professional media. Correct? That will help you in creating a rank. Now, for example, uh, somebody from, uh, from Oxford College had a question how exactly is chemical activity differentiated from stoichiometric concentration? He just went and posted and look ahead. Somebody has responded and he or she is a professor in Pennsylvania State University of Food Science. Now, that's great. Once you have passed out, it will be a bit difficult for you to get in touch with the lectures. But then how would you be connected to the real world and get valid information? This is one. Plus, you can always read about what other people are asking questions. Right? Am I clear? Okay. So are you convinced this kind of stuff can help you or not? Okay. See, the benefit of anything, nothing comes easy, okay? You could not, you cannot finish your MSc in one day. You have, it takes time, right? It takes two years. The same thing, here what I'm telling you, it's gonna take time, okay? It's gonna take time, but it will suddenly help you create a personal plan. Now, these are the founding members of Quora. Now, of course, uh, once we have discussed about Quora, my point here is, I have created the brand, I have created a LinkedIn profile, I am blogging constantly. What if the HRs or the scientists are not taking notice? You have to always cross check how exactly this can help you. So the moment you are forming a CV, like your my colleagues were saying about post your valid email IDs and contact numbers and all that stuff, all that stuff why not post http so double dot slash slash linkedin.com slash your name which is a profile link why not post that so that whatever hard work you have done already gets into notice and the moment the HR logs into the website he sees your updates will it help yes. it will help but you have to be consistent in that now, people who are uh, who have just joined the course or who are going to finish the course, the most important part here is to get noticed. The most important part is let people know that this is a chap in final university of Oxford College and he has got a lot of opinions and a lot of ideas. That's how you become a scientist, right? You can't become a scientist with uh, just the uh, SOPs which are already there. You have to innovate, you have to question them, correct? So that is when you will be doing more research on Quora, posting valuable information, getting appreciated and then posting those as status updates on LinkedIn and Facebook and please make it public. Don't just share it with your friends and that will help you go viral in terms of your reputation online. Because the moment you walk in to any HR channel, he will suddenly look at your reputation okay? and your resume is no longer your reputation. Okay? Anybody has got any questions, I would love to answer each one of you individually. No questions? Great. Looks like either uh, you are no 
so much astounded by the topic or uh, you didn't understood it? Either way. <laughs> okay, I heard some questions, some lady asked over there about uh, marketing, how MBA helps, right? Somebody asked a question over there? Okay. Uh, well, let me uh, tell you, it's a very valid question. A lot of life science job seekers who are just, you know, graduate or postgraduate, they ask that how long MBA will help me in my career? And my answer always is, you know, if you are willing to make a career out of marketing, the secret of getting ahead is getting started. Go ahead, get a job first into the marketing field. It has got a lot of scope. But MBA, it's something which just adds a vanity. It's like a vanity bag. Okay? For example, I can tell you, uh, you know, recently there's a trend in the life science industry. They're hiring more of uh, BSCs and uh, rather than uh, hiring more of MSCs. Or they are hiring more of diploma holders than BFAM holders. Why is it so? The reason being, people who are having a lower degree, they are equally competent, plus they will charge you less because they have to pay money, correct? They have to pay your salary. So what they do is, they will say, if I hire an MBA, I have to pay, say, X amount. But if I have to hire an MSC postgraduate, if I groom him, train, train him, he will work in X by 2 only. Correct? That helps you get started, remember. I'm not saying it will help you in getting more money. It will help you in getting started. Now once you have got the job, and then you can side by side do your whatever stuff you want to do. But that's the first thing. I hope I answered your question. Okay. Now, uh, like uh, I got an impression most of you are preparing for, uh, I mean, uh, looking for a R&D career. Correct? How many of you are looking for R&D career? All of you? Okay. Now, now there are two aspects of it. Like, like I gave you an example, people are hiring more of BSCs into the production and formulation and development department rather than they are hiring, uh, you know, MSCs. The reason is again the same. The moment MSCs come into the picture, they hire, will take you. Okay, fine. Your MSC pressure, I'll hire you. You'll work for six months or one year, then you'll start having that kida in your mind. If I do PhD, you know, maybe uh, I'll uh, get a higher salary, and that's when you leave the job. But for the HR, the target is to make sure more number of people stay in the company. Okay, and that's the reason this trend has become pulled up. <coughs> okay, so if you are looking at the scenario right now, getting a PhD is a better option. Okay, but again, if you are getting a job as a MSc fresher, don't throw it. Don't just work there for one one year and then again quit the job. Go ahead for a PhD. Work there for at least two two and a half years. Have a reputation there also and get a recommendation from your colleagues on LinkedIn while you are working there and then leave. So that next time once you are coming back after a PhD, people read, okay, this person has already worked this many years in this company and this is the reputation he has got and now he has done a PhD as well. Okay, so he has become double valuable, right? That's how things will work. So as uh, Madam Majumdar has said, life science is a knowledge intensive industry and that obviously means you need to gather a lot of knowledge, keep it updated and for your information on internet, just life science information every 24 hours becomes 10 times equivalent to all the US libraries combined together. Can you imagine that much knowledge is being generated? But will we be able to consume it? Will we be able to know about it? Difficult. And that's when you have to check out the websites regularly. How many of you are internet friendly? All of you? Of course, Facebook friendly everybody is. Internet friendly is all the websites. Okay. So after this seminar, kindly go back. Three things you have to do. Check out Quora, create a personal opinion. Of course, create a LinkedIn profile. Connect with all your friends. Create a alumni page. And then start connecting with a lot of pages of uh, bi uh, biotech companies. Create an opinion and start blogging. As a fresher, it will help you. Okay? Yeah. Can you please explain how we can create blogs using Microsoft? Sure. Now, if you log into our website, on the top uh, left hand side, next to my account, a blog option will come. Okay? Just click on that, you will be able to read all the blogs of people who are posting. There itself, it will give you an option to create a blog. Okay? And if you are having any problems in that, uh, we have submitted the brochures. That has got the phone numbers, email IDs, you are free to contact us. We will get it. Okay? So, 
The most important part of today is how intellectually sound you are. Okay? All of you have to have a standard. Okay? Your college has given you such a nice infrastructure. They have given you everything. But if you do not have an intellectual standard, how would somebody know when you go out of college? It's just what you speak. So, communication is more important. How you communicate with today's world, that's what I help you. Okay? With this, I will conclude my presentation for the day. Thanks everyone for listening so patiently. Okay? And uh, please start personal branding. It will certainly help you all in getting better jobs, high paying jobs. All the best. so that we have a genuine feedback how we perform in solving your queries and then if you have your updated series you can hand it over back to us we will be suddenly getting back to you Thank you.